This is a significant week for defendant Donald Trump, as you may have heard. He is facing off against this jury that's being selected in his home state, the criminal trial, where he has been mandated to attend every day the court is in session. That's been the last two days. Today, as has been scheduled, is a dark day. Most Wednesdays, the New York court is not expected to meet, although that can change. Uh, they made a lot of progress yesterday. More than a third of the total jurors needed have now been sworn in. So that is a big step forward. Now, Trump has tried to delay this case every single chance he's had, which is the same approach they've used in other places. And now he's going online complaining that this is moving quickly. Now, that is an odd complaint for someone who has also said that it takes him off the campaign trail or it's not fair as a so-called, quote, witch hunt. If you think those things, then logically you would want to get this over with to get back to the campaign trail. And if you think you're innocent, you would want to go through with it and show the jury that and move on. His attorney, Alina Haba, who is not involved in this direct case, but does speak out for Trump on a host of issues, legal and otherwise, is arguing that this jury, which remember, we don't know anything about yet, is biased because it is a jury of his peers in the jurisdiction where the alleged conduct occurred, which is what is required for fairness under law. We're seeing a painful, unfortunately, selection because we're in the state of New York, which is definitely by design. These venues are selected exactly for this reason, Martha, so that they have a blue state with a blue pool. That's not the case. And indeed, we have already reported on the vetting process, the questions they ask, Wardour, the jury selection, and how all of that, again, overseen by independent nonpartisan judges, is designed to ensure that nobody is thinking about this too politically. Now, this is the case. New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg brought the case. The events that are involved occurred in New York. The judge is taking care to treat Trump like other criminal defendants within reason. He has to be present when court is in session. So, like I mentioned, he was there both days yesterday. Today, they're off. He's already denied one request, which was Trump claimed that the Supreme Court arguments next week on the Jack Smith case, which is his other big criminal matter, right? They want to put him on trial for the Jan 6 coup as a violation of federal law. Trump claimed he wanted to go to the Supreme Court and wanted to get off this case. We should mention in the Colorado ban case, and I happen to be in the courtroom covering that, there was a lot of talk about whether Trump would attend, and he ultimately did not. Now, that doesn't predict or tell us exactly what would have happened, but we don't have any record of Trump ever attending a recent Supreme Court case. And yet, that's what he said he needed to do, but the court has said no. So Donald Trump will be required to be in court as long as it's in session next week, which means he can't go to the Thursday Supreme Court argument. Now, there are other scheduling matters that can come up. The judge says that he has not yet decided about Trump's request separately to get a day off to go to his son's graduation. In Trump's other civil fraud New York case, there's also some ways that we're seeing that Donald Trump, as a rich, famous, connected person and a former president, does have some strings he can pull. For example, he got that bond that was initially very high based on the penalty he'd received in that case, over $400 million, reduced to $175 million. Now, we know Trump posted that bond because a Trump donor, a billionaire, had put up the money. I can show you a little bit about this gentleman. He's named Don Hankey, and his company is Knight Specialty Insurance. Hankey and Trump have a whole history of doing business, including a bank that refinanced Trump's loans. And new court filings reveal the details here. So basically, you may recall, a lot of insurers didn't want to take up this bond. They didn't think that there was either enough money or collateral to make it a safe investment. And so Trump sort of phoned a friend to get the bond in the civil case. Now, Trump's team says that they did use cash to secure the bond, saying it's inconceivable that any shortfall could arise, given that the $175 million bond is secured by $170 million in cash. Now, that's the claim, and this might sound a little technical, but it actually matters, because legal experts are looking at this and saying that doesn't really add up, because if you had the cash, you wouldn't need the bond. That's literally what bonds are. They substitute for cash. Take Andrew Weissman, who has a much experience in this as a DOJ veteran, former Mueller prosecutor, and as we've told you before, an analyst now for us says it's fishy. Trump has a $175 million free and clear. If he had that, quote, why not directly post it and not pay a fee for this surety bond. There's a bond expert who also says that this is an overly complicated way and that it might prompt the judge to examine more thoroughly what's going on here. 
Now, that could happen at the hearing next week. Again, that is the civil case, which is separate from Donald Trump's criminal case. Both cases, though, are drawing and draining his time and his bank account. Now, there are those separate requirements, and Trump has to keep that money in the bond, however it's set up, in order to have the right to appeal this at all. So you take this together, and what you see is even on a day where one case is off for a day, they will resume picking jurors tomorrow in the main event here, the criminal case, Donald Trump has a lot of legal problems and headaches. When jury selection continues tomorrow, I suppose it will also continue to make Donald Trump upset because the defendant has said they're moving too fast to pick the jurors to actually hold the trial. In the debt, I'm great with debt. Nobody knows debt better than me. I've made a fortune by using debt. I like debt for me. Donald Trump talking up his debt, and boy, he's used a lot of it lately. Margaret Carlson is with us from the Washington Monthly, and Lance Fletcher served in the Manhattan DA's office from 2004 to 2008, has extensive experience on all these issues. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Margaret, I want to start big picture. Um, this criminal trial is a big deal. It would, the only thing that would make it even larger for the, the citizenry would be if it was a television trial, uh, like OJ or something, where you had cameras in the courtroom under the rules. They just don't do that in New York State. Uh, but I want to play a little bit of the, the late night host talking about this, which is a sign uh, people know about it and are following it. Punchlines don't work if it's too obscure. Uh, take a look. One potential juror was an older woman who said she believes no one is above the law. And Trump's lawyers are like, get her out of here right now. It's <laughs> the court sketch artist had time to draw him. <laughs> Well, I think we found the new mascot for Celestial Seasoning, Sleepy Crime Tea. Hey. Uh, Margaret, curious, given all your experience, how you think this is breaking through um, and how even the relatively straightforward parts, I've seen other defendants ask for a day off for a family reason, um, how even that reinforces the fact that Trump's not in control, that someone else will be ordering him around, uh, that his entire days uh, will be subject uh, to the judge who's in charge, not him. Oh, it, it just must be so deflating and depressing for Donald Trump to have somebody else telling him what to do, because he only surrounds himself with people in his company that would do what he said to do, which is part of why he's on trial. And he tells his lawyers what to do, and then he doesn't listen to what they tell him to do. So to be at the mercy of a judge is just horrifying for him. And he's at the mercy of a couple of judges. So, uh, but you know, and to the, your earlier point, I want, I want Don Hankey to have a chat with the My Pillow guy and see how things turned out for him uh, backing Trump in so many endeavors and, and spending his own money. And now I think, I think Mike Liddell has his own debt problems. So he should turn back to Trump and say, hey, you love debt. Can you help me? Because I don't love debt. Who loves debt? Trump is so full of braga, I don't know how to say this word, all right, braggadocio. I've only read the word, I never hmm. hear the word, but he's full of that thing. Yeah. Uh, Lance, you have done these kinds of cases. Um, a lot of people are kind of catching up on how it works. Uh, your just thoughts uh, after these first two days, uh, how it compares to other trials. In some ways, it's going to be necessarily different. Um, what jumped out to you? Well, a lot of things. Uh, in, in a normal case, I think it's difficult for, for a criminal defendant uh, to go from being released where they're at liberty, they're enjoying their life in a normal sort of way, and then uh, for that criminal defendant to watch their situation transition into a trial where they're not guilty, they're not really innocent yet, but they're, they're part of a, of a process that's going to maybe set them free or maybe send them to jail. And as part of that, um, the rules start to change. And so we, we've seen a little bit of that this week uh, where uh, Judge Mershon uh, had to instruct uh, Mr. Trump very forcefully. Um, and also, um, he, Mr. Trump can't go uh, watch, uh, you know, a graduation or he can't just travel here or travel there or say whatever he wants. And so the, the rules are starting to, to tighten around him, which is uh, that's a normal sort of thing in, a, in any criminal case. But I think it, it uh, presents special challenges here, uh, given the nature of who Donald Trump is. Any thoughts on the jury selection? Uh, we don't know much. We knew sort of gender and profession. Uh, but, but any thoughts there? 
Yeah, um, jury selection can be very uh, difficult. Uh, they don't really teach jury selection in, in law school. You have to sort of pick it up. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of reading somebody and getting to know who you're talking to. Um, also, other strange things can happen during jury selection, such as uh, the, the things that some of the prospective jurors say can then start to resonate around uh, with the other, the other candidates. Uh, so if you have if you have one juror who's who's uh, taking a strong position about a certain issue that you're talking about, um, that can start to influence how everyone else is thinking about that issue, and maybe in a way that you want, maybe in a way that you don't. Um, but I think it was very interesting uh, in in uh, last week's developments that um, you, you had a point being made, which is that you could be a Democrat, you can be a Republican, you could have feelings about Donald Trump, but when you come into the courthouse, uh, the question really becomes whether you can set those personal feelings aside and, and uh, decide the case based on the, the, the facts and circumstances of the case. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.